Yeah, Cheryl, things on com. I received a, uh, a, twi- a tweet from at Fluoride Ninja, and he was asking me about the uh, the mixing ratio of powder to wa- uh, powder to liquid for good old Roth 801. Well, I'm glad he messaged today because um, he couldn't find it online. I went searching online, couldn't find it either. But of course, we got some old school stuff in house, and we got the the 8, 811 and the 801. Now, I'm not sure what the difference is. So let's take a look at the formula. And zinc oxide, stabilite resin, bismuth, subnitrate, NF, barium sulfate, sodium borate. Apparently, the only difference in these two products, according to the label, is that there's a zero here and there's a one here. In any event, the neat thing is is that on it, well, until I took the tape off, I found the instructions. So for all of you that uh, he found that was uh, one to one, it actually interestingly isn't. It's um, and that's probably the easiest way to do it. But there's a, a neat little thing. So it says uh, powder should be mixed on a sterilized slab. So I have a glass slab. I mean, most of the time, reality hits we'll be using a pad. But I wasn't found. I was curious to see if we had any glass slabs in the house, and we do. So <clears throat> we'll be using that. So this really, this mixing um, is based on the drops of solvent and which tooth you're doing. So it says two drops of solvent, which is eugenol, right here. Uh, interesting, another thing I've learned about eugenol is using it for, I mean, there's th- thousands different different ways of uh, treating alveolar osteitis. And one is uh, placing uh, eugenol onto gel foam, rinse out the socket, and place uh, u- Roth, uh, not Roths, but Eugenol, I guess Roths, Eugenol, you could do that, onto the gel foam, place it intraorally. Now, Eugenol is neurotoxic, so it uh, will sort of burn off the uh, nervous endings, uh, decreasing the pain. So that's just a little tip. I mean, I guess it has some applicability to endo. So take two drops of solvent of Eugenol for filling an anterior bicuspid tooth, while three drops for a molar. Not sure, it doesn't say whether or not this is for lateral condensation. But when this was developed, which was a long time ago, I'm gonna make that assumption. Spatulation should be a slow, deliberate process in which very small amounts of powder are incorporated into the solvent as much as one minute of spatulation is often required for each minute, each drop of solvent. So we're gonna pretend we're doing an, a bicuspid and I wouldn't found the good old timer. So let's, let's increase that to two minutes. And then on the back, so we, da, 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 I'll take a picture and put this up, paddle back and forth. When the cement is gathered together on the spatula held edgewise, it should not drop off for at least 15 seconds. When returning to the slab and the flat surface the spatula slowly raised, the cement should string out for at least one inch without breaking. So 15 seconds and one inch. I mean, I remember, I learned that in dental school 13 years ago. Okay, let's take some, let's do the 801. And because it's not based on scoops of powder, I'm just going to take some because we're going to. We'll take two anyways. See if it. You know what? Let's do that one to one for our little tabletop experiment. Let's see how close we get to it. Okay, there's that. I'll take two drops. One, two. And I'll start the timer. And one of the things I learned, actually, I'll talk about it when we go. Okay, go. <clears throat> so, ooh, nothing like mixing things on glass. I think that's what we use. One of the things I learned from a dental assistant is to pick up the, um, they didn't really teach you this in dental school, maybe they do, they didn't teach it in mine. To pick it up with the end of the spatula, so you see how I'm using half of sort of the, the end tip to pick it up, so it sort of stays all mixed together. All right, 120, stop talking. And one of my other mentors who just finished endo school a few years ago always taught me about 
sort of grinding in the particles. And that made a huge difference. And I think it was with Ross who was teaching me that. So you see how I'm collecting it? And then I'm just sort of, I'm sort of grinding in the particles to make it nice and smooth. Because you actually can feel it if you run this over, uh, if the particles aren't fully uh, dissolved into the eugenol. So again, picking up So there's kind of that inch. Let's do the test. We have the timer. Oh, I looked at the watch. Okay. There's 13. Just did some rowing and my arm's a little shaky. And I'll give it two extra seconds. So that looks like that's about the ready set. And again, let's just check. I mean, you. Some folks say that um, Ross never sets. Some f the bottom of the web page says it sets in four to twelve hours. And there's our nice string. My dental materials prof professor would be super happy. That was able to pull it up. So actually, if we look at, I mean, this is just a tabletop one shot. Um, it really wasn't one to one. It was more like two drops to one of powder. So in any event. Uh, I couldn't find that anywhere, so I hope that helps in your search for the mixing ratio of um, Roth's sealer. Cheers.